Okay, um, we're going to continue uh, exploring Illustrator just a little bit more. Now, uh, picking up where we left off with that uh, overlay sort of uh, image, um, let's look at Illustrator's interface a little bit, right? So you'll notice uh, there's a couple of things. Now, the layer system works pretty much the same as the way Photoshop does, right? So layers that are on top will be on top and they'll cover whatever they're over. And so sometimes you'll want to make sure, and I actually just accidentally moved my layer into the sublayer. So I'll just undo that. Uh, but you can basically drag and reorder the layers uh, accordingly. You know? So this uh, now, uh, so make sure you sort of over order these layers uh, in the order that you desire. So the ones that are on top should be on top, and the ones that are bottom should be on bottom. So in this case, for example, the sort of white layer or the white dotted line. Now don't be confused by the layer display colors, right? This red, black, and green. These are just to kind of help you recognize the elements that are in um, the Illustrator viewport. So when I'm hovering over the background image, it gives me this green uh, frame, right? That tells me that this is an object on the green layer, right? It doesn't mean you know anything except that. Now, so when I hover over, I, when I click on the white dotted lines, it gives me the red frame. When I click on the black, then it gives me the black frame. So these all correspond to the layer display colors. So in this case, you know, I actually probably might want the white lines to be below the black lines, right? You don't want the white lines to actually be on top of the what's in front. So I would basically sort of reorder it. Be careful not to do this, like because that means you will insert it within another layer, right? You're basically putting it inside another layer. We'll put it in between, right? So we're reordering it. So in this case, the black lines are on top, the white lines are in the middle, and the background is in the back. So you can lock these uh, if you want to. Um, I'm going to make a new layer, and you'll see that it automatically gives it an, assigns a new color, right? Then double click on the, the name to rename it, let's say text. Say OK. And uh, Let's actually make the text layer on the very top. So drag it on to the very top. Make sure that you're dropping it in the right place. And you can lock all the other three layers just so you don't, you know, accidentally do anything to it. Okay? So here, uh, let's try to make some text. So this is the type tool. Uh, there you can see when you hold down, uh, you have a lot of different uh, options, but let's just stick with the basic. You can actually do it on a path or within an area. But with the basic one, you just click anywhere and say, you know, volume year one. Okay? And that becomes a, its own sort of object, right? Now, when you click on it, you can double click on it just to and highlight things to edit them, just like you would with a word processor if you want to make it a bit larger, right, like this. 14 point or 24 point, and then click on the selection tool, which is V, to get out. Or you can actually just drag and resize it this way, too, right? Uh, just hold down Shift, and the size will actually update automatically. Uh, obviously, you can change the font and all that stuff here, paragraph text, etc. These are you know, more or less self explanatory. Now, the only difference with the text is that. Uh, Generally, you'll see that in this case, this is actually a fill color. It's not a stroke color. If you add a stroke color, I can add, let's say, a red stroke color, you'll see that it actually comes out on the outside of the text, right? So it's sort of this boundary thing. And you can change you know, how thin or how thick, if you make it really thick, you know, the stroke is, right? So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. But generally, for text, um, the stroke is non-existent, therefore uh, zero or nothing. Just makes it a little bit simpler. Okay, so let's say that's too big. Uh, let's do let's say 36 for example, right? Uh, let's say this is a diagram that you're trying to make, and you know this is volume one, and I actually want to make this red to kind of correspond with that. And let's say that's volume two. Uh, off dragging. 
copies, right? So I can very simply just hold down the Alt key, click on something, drag uh, to copy it. If you hold down Shift, it also constrains it in the horizontal or vertical direction. So you ever ever have to move something? Also, you can use the arrow keys to nudge things, Shift and arrow key to nudge more in larger increments. Right? These are very similar to uh, Photoshop, right? So now I can just edit and say, okay, that's volume two, and this is volume three, and finish, right? Um, and then, you know, highlight these two and change the color, the fill color back to, let's say, black, since they're black. Just put them anywhere like that, okay? So uh, now we're going to use, actually, the pen tool. And just click, holding down shift, Click somewhere else and then click a diagonal like this and finish it by going back to the selection tool. So this makes a compound path and I'm actually going to give it a stroke that's black or actually in this case red and no fill. Right? So this on the left is always the fill, this on, this on the right is always the stroke. So these are the representation that you see instead of the foreground background thing that you see in Photoshop. Okay? Just be aware of that. Now you can change the point and the size of there so that you see all new. Now this is now a, a sort of like a compound stroke. So I can actually just sort of position it just right, you know, uh, if I want to overlap or I want to just touch it. Zoom in a little bit um, and just sort of like position it, okay? And I can put my volume, and you, there is a little bit of snapping behavior uh, that exhibits, but you can sort of adjust things to your liking, um, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So that's a call out, uh, volume one, and I can easily just, you know, copy it, copy it. Now, in this case, uh, it's in the other direction, right? So all you have to do is to actually just drag it the other direction, like that. Right, use the sort of scaling tool basically to drag it in the other direction. And you can actually adjust the length um, pretty easily. Now, if you wanted to keep the angle consistent, then just double click in. And you can actually, uh, if you go to here, the direct selection tool, which is A, you're actually able to change, uh, click on the anchors. And this just moves the, the line around, right? If you double click, you can actually change the, the anchors themselves, right? If you really wanted to kind of get into that. And then double click outside to get out of that edited mode, uh, and then go back to your selection tool, right? The direct selection tool basically allows you to select, you know, sub objects within a larger group. So let's say this is volume two, so I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. Put that, whatever and um, actually change both of these back to uh, black strip, right? Uh, and this one this thing is here, volume three is there. Well, that's basically what you do. Uh, make this a dash line, just for fun, just for fun. All right, so you see how this is how, you know, you can do some very simple call outs, uh, add a little bit of text. Now, uh, a lot of other tools are similar to the ones in Photoshop, but the pen tool is probably the one that you're going to use the most. Um, the line segment tool works a little bit differently than you would expect because it's sort of click, drag, and these are all usually individual line segments. I try not to use it. I stick to the pen tool if I can. Um, don't really need the eraser because you can select anything and click on delete. So if you look at um, some of the other tools, you have the rectangle tool here, you have the rounded rectangle tool here, right? So sometimes it's good for some graphical things, ellipse, blah, blah. These are, you can always, you know, change precise location and width height here. So these are where you change the sizes. So if you needed a two inch by two inch square, then this would give you basically exactly a two inch by two inch square. Now, as always, you can change the stroke, you can change the fill to different colors. Um, they can also be semi-transparent gradients like this, um, if you want. So you see that um, you can actually layer things this way as well. 
uh, the same way you would in Photoshop. Um, so there's actually a lot of possibilities here. Um, you can select one of these and just like give it you know, a sh shade like that. Um, and you'll notice that here you can actually specify transparencies by themselves. Um, so here, for example, I can change the opacity of it, an object by itself, right? This isn't the, the transparency of a layer. This is the transparency of an object. So you have transparency control on an per object basis, right? And then um, in this case, you can actually say area type tool and click on something, right? And this is actually text that will fit uh, inside you know, whatever box you give it, right? So I just made this a little bit uh, smaller. It kind of makes sense. Uh, well, for example, you need a, a sort of caption box or a paragraph box, and it has a sort of outline. Oops, wrong thing. And let's just like fill it with text. This is just random text, right? And so you'll see that this actually is something that will, you know, dyan dynamic adjust basically as a text box, just in case you needed something that sort of operates in this sort of realm. So you just need to make a shape first and then use the area type tool to click on the path and that will convert it into something like that. All right? So that kind of gives you an idea of how uh, that works. You know, obviously you know that you can scale this if you need uh, by dragging the corners easily or these scripts easily. Uh, if you hold down the shift that may forces a uniform scale. If you float a little bit on the corners, you'll see this sort of rotate, right, like that. Um, and there are all these corresponding tools, but you probably won't need them too much. Okay. Um, so the last function we're going to look at is something called the live paint function. And um, I unlock these two layers here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this uh, outline layer. And I'm going to make a copy by alt dragging it. And I'm doing this uh, just so you can understand a little better what's going on. Okay, so I'm alt dragging it to the side. Now with it selected, um, I can come over here and find this guy, which is the live paint bucket, uh, K. And then when you hover over it, you'll see you'll get this sort of uh, display saying click to make a live paint group. When you do that, it actually changes it into, into this sort of, uh, you know, sort of a detection mode, right? And you can pick a color, let's say this blue, and actually paint in the certain faces uh, that you want, for example, all the ones that are facing, let's say, this direction, right? And you can actually change the opacity here to make it, you know, semi-transparent, whatever. Note that when you change the opacity, the line opacity changes as well, right? Um, so before, and then you can do that to basically complete. And this basically binds everything together into one group. Um, you can always click on the live paint again and go and you know, add another color, so red you know, this way. And it's still keeping or inherent, inheriting the uh, sort of transparency that you gave it a bit earlier, right? So we can do that. And so you see this is very similar to, you know, the, the sort of uh, uh, hatching function, right, in, in um, AutoCAD. And if you kind of see this, and I'm just sort of fudging this, so let's just snap it close together. So you can see the effect that it can sort of have on the drawing like this. Now the reason I copied it to the side is because that if I just did it to this, uh, let's say if I, and what one thing I can do here, then you'll see there are two groups, right? There's this one and this one, right? Uh, when I select this one, it gets highlighted, right? So I'm just gonna drag this anchor and try to snap it back into place. Just roughly. 
and make a new layer call it let's say live paint or live shade whatever uh, make sure I'm selecting the green the blue stuff right this and then just control V to undo it so I know I'm selecting it and what you can do is that you can click with that selected it will actually tell you which group you have selected here right so I'll just drag this click here and drag it over to the live paint uh, layer so you now I've separated the two groups I've moved one layer one group from this layer to this group now right just to kind of make things less confusing right so now I can actually hide one or the other so you'll see that you know if I both hit in and I just have the light pin layer on the sort of boundary lines have disappeared right because they've been made semi-transparent so you'll if you're trying to do this I do suggest that you separate the layers uh, put the live paint layer, you know, below since it's a shade, right, and then you can play with it that way. Now just be careful that you don't activate the wrong layer again when you're trying to do something like that. Now what's sort of nice about this is then you can actually play with the transparency and I'm going to hide the top two layers, let's say of this background layer, uh, or the hidden line layer, uh, then you can do the same thing, live paint bucket, Make it live paint, but you'll see that uh, some of these blah blah. Okay, some of these won't close, right? Because these are open, so you can actually only apply that to parts of uh, this particular uh, construct. And let's just do some grays and make it semi-transparent. So you see this is a lot less, less uh, flexible, but it works really well for these sort of outer edges. But if you wanted to kind of color in some of the background, then you can try and uh, do that. But because we have them separated into different layers, when you select them, you can always use the uh, click here on this little, little round thing uh, on the right, which is kind of like the selection dip. So you click there to kind of select everything that's on that layer. Then you can play with the transparency uh, there. So let's say I'm selecting the live paint layer and I can change the sort of tint or the amount of tint that this drawing is receiving, right? Just to kind of make the effect a little bit more subtle. And you'll see a little bit of the darkened stuff that I clicked on earlier. Okay, so that's a live paint. It works on any sort of closed boundaries. It's really cool, but make sure it's really hard. It's doable, but you would basically have to kind of explode everything uh, to be able to uh, adjust the sort of stroke and line width because you'll see here you get question marks everywhere. Um, it's harder to adjust after the fact. But if you really, 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 really need to, uh, then the sort of option to do that is to expand it, which will basically explode everything into their own, and I'm just going to sort of hide everything so you can see, uh, will explode everything into their own objects. I'm just double clicking in to get into the sort of separate object layers. Uh, you're sort of going, and this shows you how many levels deep you're going, right? So this is a path group, etc. Uh, you can click these to kind of come out. So that's a sort of like nesting structure uh, that's within here uh, and that's basically usually how groups within um, Illustrator work. All right um, so that kind of gives you a really rough overview of some of the functions that are within you know uh, Illustrator. Obviously you can see that there's a lot more that you can do. Uh, it'll just take a little time you can apply gradients and stuff that's very similar to Photoshop um, but these are Kind of the, the basics that we really want to uh, show you. All right.